one point you mentioned amongst a few others, you know, like 8% current, uh, you know, the first year. Uh, talk about some other things that makes the deal for you right now. Like what are some non-negotiables, uh, you know, as you're, as you're underwriting and looking at assets now? No, sure. We're also looking at lease expirations. Like uh, I'm negotiating one, a small deal, only because it's like down the street from something we already own down in Atlanta. And I waited the, the seller out. You know, he wanted a certain number and I didn't think the deal made sense given the, the relative, you know, it's risk reward. So now that I waited him down, I'm going to con- go to contract on, on a 10% return. So in theory, I don't need to leverage, but I will put some money on there. But uh, I'm looking at his lease expirations. And I said, you know, I'm going to have a problem financing because you have a tenant that's rolling in August and we need to solve for that. So either they're going to renew before we go to contract, you're going to provide a credit enhancement, or we're just going to, you know, have a very, very long due diligence period that's going to take me up until I see what he's doing. And we figured it out. We, you know, from talking to the leasing broker, we found that one of the tenants next door wants the space. So I said, let's get that amendment signed now. So when I go to the lender, I don't have any financing risk uh, because we're very risk adverse when it comes to interest rate exposure and debt structures. We don't like bridge financing. We don't like bridge loans or floating rate without full term interest rate caps, uh, which is another thing that has gotten a lot of multifamily people and and others into trouble as interest rate risk. So we like to know what the tenants are doing. and we've in the last four years, five years, we, in our due diligence, we spent a lot of times uh, talking to the tenants and their facilities people, uh, what the sense of family there is at the workplace. 